So I'm, I'm using the same technique that we use when we build our birch bark canoes. So I'm driving a square peg that I whittled out into a round hole. Cedar is very soft. Um, I've used a piece of uh, elm here. It's very dense and very hard. So you, when everything dries out, because we're using green wood here, when everything dries out, it just shrinks all up and it tightens up just like um, you were driving a wood screw in. So yeah, we're going to uh, move on to the tabletop. I, I've decided to employ remnants. All the logs are leftovers from rafters and such and legs. Uh, and I'm using the leftovers from my floor uh, sheeting and my roof sheeting of the cabin roof and veranda for the tabletop. So we're not going to waste anything. We are uh, getting some particularly fickle weather these days. Spring came really early, came on like gangbusters. We lost our snow in a week and a half. And our northern lakes, uh, according to people that keep accounts, uh, the ice has gone out uh, a good full two weeks earlier than it ever has. So, yeah, really strange weather, and today we got winter again. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is I'm employing the same method I used um, for my floor joists and my roof rafters in ads and these out flat. So I got this side done, and I got this side marked, so I'm going to get it uh, sawn out here, and uh, we're going to chisel that out.
where these rosebud nails are going to be the end of my hands. Last nail. So I'm not sure a, a marble won't roll off this tabletop, but she's, uh, I think it's pretty flat. And uh, I think it was Benjamin Franklin coined the phrase, uh, waste not, want not. So this is totally from scrap. And uh, yeah, we're finished. So I'm trying to do a hodgepodge of things with my cabin build now in the interlude of waiting for warmer weather in the spring we can actually start working on the hearth and the chimney, which I'm pretty excited about. In fact, I'm quite anxious to get started at it. But I'm trying to get a lot of the little things done, so furniture building, uh, window framing, etc. But I'm going to go on, a, take a bit of a break. I'm going to start looking for material uh, for our spring uh, birch bark canoe build. Anyway, i got to get this thing inside out of the weather, let it dry a bit, get it finished up and oiled. So this is the time of year we start uh, looking for raw material for our canoe build this spring. And uh, this tree is absolutely perfect, uh, really straight bowl, and there's no limb structure up maybe 25, almost 30 feet. And any of the old branch unions, we call them cat eyes, that were cast off when it was a much younger tree, have healed over quite well. So ideal tree problem is it's uh, probably about 13 inches diameter. Ideally we're looking for one about 14. Uh, we could get away with this one but uh, we'll leave them for a few years and if I continue to build uh, birch bark canoes, uh, if I still have a few more left in me, we'll be back to visit this guy again. And uh, yeah, now we're going to start looking for some straight cedar because I seem to have depleted most of that in my woodlot. What we have here is a pileated woodpecker, or probably different species of woodpeckers, lunch. Um, and so you can see this, this tree is structurally uh, unsound. I, I literally, um, if I wanted, I could probably just push this tree over at this point. But you notice um, we've got healthy trees all around it, the same species. So this is a basswood. And Trees are sort of like people. If they're in a weakened state, we call it vigor in, in trees. Um, airborne pathogens like these fruiting bodies you see will attack the tree. When the tree gets weakened, wood borers will attack it. And if you look really closely here, you can see um, these are created by, by wood borers here. And so they've laid their larvae in here. Um, quite easy for them to penetrate. This healthier tree behind it, same species, they're both basswood. Um, they're not going to attack yet because it's just too tough to, to enter. So, these, as I mentioned, these are basswood, and uh, basswood has a lot of applications. Um, in the indigenous people uh, use the inner bark of it to make a really strong cordage. Uh, I've made some myself, and even unsoaked and dried, if you just weave it into, uh, into strips, uh, you can literally tie a wigwam and such up with it. It's also a great carving material. Pretty poor firewood, not a lot of heat in it. But as you can see, uh, this particular one, we're not going to use it for any kind of building material. Anyway, I digress. I should be looking for cedar, or sorry, I should be looking for uh, birch bark canoe building material. So I'm walking on a, a road here that was uh, built approximately 18, somewhere between 1830 and 1860. They were called colonization roads, and there's literally hundreds of miles of them in the part of the province that I live in. 
and it's sort of the last cusp of farming. So if I were to head north um, only a few miles, I would hit Precambrian Shield. Uh, so very poor farmland, settled mostly by poor Irish uh, Catholics. Uh, on both the left and the right-hand side of me, you'll see rail fences that date back to the same period. So these, these poor old rail fences are um, coming on 200 years or so, I guess, in age. Anyway, I'm going to keep looking for canoe building material.